So we're going to shift gears here, and I've got a really cool interview taking place. This particular interview um, was actually set up at one point in time, back in 2020, 2000, I'm sorry, 2021, and because of this individual's uh, employer, they had to cancel, because when they got word of the interview taking place, they didn't feel that it was necessarily right for this to take place on our stage because this individual was working for a competing coaching company. And so um, I will tell you, this is something that I've been working on for several years to get in front of our audience because the person that I'm going to introduce to you has had an impact on me far greater than many of the other impacts that have taken place in my life. This particular individual took a chance on me at 20 years old when I had a huge ego. I had it all figured out. I sold 32 homes my first year in the business and I could teach others how to do the same. And when my current broker at the time said, no Jeff, you need just a little bit more seasoning, this particular person said, come on aboard. We have an opportunity for you. Now, later I found out that it was like their most failing office and they were gonna close it anyway, so they didn't really have a lot to lose. <laughs> but I actually ended up turning around that office and it was the fastest growing office in the chain for the couple years that I was in that particular role. They say in life you're shaped by the five people you spend the most time with, and I can tell you this particular individual I spent the most time with for a, a very important period of my life. In fact, I think it was probably from age 19 to age 25, 26, somewhere in that range, whether it be she was my leader or she was my coach. Because at some point in time, when I was no longer with her company, I still, I immediately turned around and hired her as my coach. So when I say the name, you, many of you that have been following me for a long time, and Joe, if you've watched every single video on YouTube, I know you know the name because I talk about this particular individual often. And I actually think that there's a, a lesson in that, in that when you have people that have shaped you, when you have people that have made a difference in your life, as much as possible, you should give them the credit and the recognition for that. And so this particular individual, for those of you that have been following for a while, for us for a while, has been receiving that credit and very much deserved credit because she was willing to take a chance on me and developed me at a very high level. This was the individual that helped me go from literally salesperson to CEO because I had only about 18 months experience selling real estate and I thought I could run a real estate office. And she showed me how to do it. She showed me how to recruit, how to train, how to manage, how to lead, how to be a better person, how to be a better uh, uh, leader to the people that looked up to me. And I am so excited to introduce to our stage somebody that I've been wanting to interview for a long time now, Miss Kathy Schweitzer. So as, as we were hugging it out there, I said, this is way overdue. She's like, what's it been, 15 years? Yeah, I think so. so well, Kathy, not since we met, but... That's right. Yeah, since, since I've been courting you. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly how I describe it, too. <laughs> well, maybe a little aggressively courting me, but... <laughs> so, Kathy, take us back. Um, you know, the, the audience has heard of you to some degree because I mention you a lot either on our podcast or on our videos or from the stage, uh, but they don't necessarily know much about you or your background because, you know, I say your name and we move on and they, they think maybe, well, that's good that he had that mentor, that's, that's, she poured into him and now he's pouring into us. So take us back to like day one in the business, right? Let's go, let's go all the way back to day one in the business. It was a long time ago. No, so, yeah, so day one in the business, I had the fortune, my husband is here, 
Paul Schweitzer, it was actually the final decision of hiring you, so. <laughs> Thank and you, Paul. I can see you there. I can see you there, yeah. So I started in the business, uh, I think we decided like in 1988, I was 10, no. Um, <laughs> and Paul, my husband Paul had a very successful real estate company in Southeast Michigan that actually his mother started in the 50s and she was the first woman licensed in the state of Michigan. So way to go, girls. Yes, <laughs> that's cool. Really cool. She was a pioneer and an amazing woman and a huge impact on me and obviously Paul. So anyway. Uh, and by I, the way, yeah. she's being modest. Uh, th this was the number one Coal Banker firm in the Midwest for transactions, and they only had offices in Detroit, 16 of them to be exact. So it wasn't just a little small mom and pop shop. Right. That, that makes sense. So Paul's mom started it. Make a long story short, Paul, my husband, took it over after he graduated from the other Michigan school, the Michigan State University, and his mom said, come on, son, you gotta help me run this business, and he turned it into a very successful 750 agent um, mm -hmm. real estate company, and we started dating, and then I'm like, maybe I should get into real estate, so make a long story short, I sold for five years, and because it was a family business, I felt that it was very important that um, I got involved from the, the, the grassroots, yep. you know, level and I wore every hat and I ended up being the operating person in the company way back when. Yes, and by operating person in the company, how we got introduced is your number one responsibility was managing, developing, leading, and training the managers. Yes. And, and these weren't like young whippersnappers like me. These were people that had been managing offices for you or other companies for years. Right. And these were people that were set in their ways, and you know, kind of back then it was more of the traditional approach. Now, of course, we'll talk about what what things have changed through the years. But you know, you you dealt with a lot of egos, uh, a lot of strong personalities, and it was your job to teach the leaders of your brokerages how to recruit, train, retain. I mean, basically, how to run a real estate company. Exactly. What was that like? Interesting. It was very interesting. Uh, we had a great time. We were very uh, blessed to have great people like Jeff with us, which we'll have to get into how that happened and mm -hmm. how that started, because it's a good story. It was interesting, you know, so as part of being a great leader is your ability to adapt to the people that you lead. And you look at each individual for who they are and what their strengths are and what they bring to the table, and then you try to bring the best out of that, which is similar to coaching. Yep. So I was uh, so younger than some of them, so it was ability to try to connect with them in their worlds and help them become strong and we actually created a very strong dynamic leadership team and we were very fortunate to, to have been doing that for quite some time. And it was, it was an interesting time, but we grew and it, it was very enjoyable. One of the things I, I've always admired about your company and I tell stories to people about this is they were operating a company that you could never go higher than like an 85% split when all the other yeah. competitors in town were offering 100% splits. So it was pretty much a guaranteed, if I was sitting with an agent and they were interviewing to join, they would say, well, I could go to Remax or Century 21 or Keller Williams and I can get 100%. You guys only go to 85%? What's up with that? And you know what was amazing is you had more top producers at Coalbanker Schweitzer Real Estate than any other firm in Metro Detroit. We did. You develop them, they stuck around. Today, they're, they're, they're known around the country, some of them very famously known. Yeah. They started with you. And so why do you think that is? Why do you think that your organization was able to attract and retain top talent, even though they knew full well they could put more money in their pocket, per se, by going to the broker down the street? That's a great question. I think it's about the culture. And again, it started with Paul's mom, and she was a big believer, as Paul was, in, is doing to others as you do to yourself. And it was so important to us to create a culture of caring mm -hmm. and a culture of contributing and giving back. And I'll never forget, uh, Nick's in the room, right? So yeah. Larry, Larry Copey said to me, Nick used to work for Larry, and Larry came up to me one time, and I'll never forget it, and he said, you know what? you might not give me the highest commission split, but you know how to increase my income. So I'm staying here, and you also make us laugh, and we smile a lot. And it was probably one of the nicest yeah, things that anyone's cool. ever said. Yeah. That's reality. Yeah. More agents need to take that approach, right? Yeah, they do. It's, it's you know, people want to be in an environment, obviously Jeff has proven this, where you feel good. Mm -hmm. So the money's important, of course, and it will come with the uh, 
how hard you work, but also your attitude towards it. Yeah, I also remember that uh, when agents were shopping brokerages, they could join our, they could join Century 21 or Remax or Keller Williams or any one of those and get a great training program for free. Meaning you could start tomorrow, we'll put you in our training program and it was for free. Do you remember what the cost of Cole Banker Schweitzer's training program was? I actually don't even remember. Seven ninety five. Oh, $7.95. You join this firm, you're writing a check for $795 to go through our training program. We were competing with good companies that were giving their training away. Yeah. And we created these, you created these success centers oh, yeah. where agents had to report to these locations yes. prior to them going to their office. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looked like? Yeah, so we did what we call a success center where we had 90 days where you had to report to uh, the success center for 90 days. There was a curriculum put in place and you had to do the old fashioned thing, that traditional thing that the amazing Jeff Quinton does and you have done tremendously and prospect every day. And so there was training and coaching and a 90 day uh, uh, training and coaching and actually prospecting. And actually getting into action. Oh yeah, yeah. every day you were on the phones yeah. and there was someone around you helping you, listening yeah. to you and encouraging yeah. you. And the phone, the phone. I mean it was literally the phone booths with mirrors in them and scripts on the walls oh, yeah. and we made vision boards on certain days and you know we'd come in and we'd role play and the trainer would do a training segment and then we spent the entire afternoon prospecting and getting in the act of learning how to list and sell real estate. And people had to pay for that. They did. And oh, by the way, the most, at the time, the most successful coal banker firm in the Midwest, the lowest split to agents, and you're coming out of the gate with a license, you gotta pay $7.95 for training. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that something? It's um, Well, you, you, know, you have to commit to it, right? You gotta pay for something and you work harder towards it. So let's fast forward to how we met. Um, I think I had reached out to the company line or something. I'm trying to remember like the first reach out because I had decided after 18 months of listing and selling real estate, and part of this is because a lot of my friends went away to college, and um, I, I had already had some success in real estate, and I didn't wanna take a step back financially, so I thought it'd be really cool. I was planning on going to college to like have a business management degree. Well, what if I could just go into the business management role without a degree? And so after 18 months, I reached out to my current broker who ran uh, the competing Century 21 firm, a really great company. They were also like the biggest in the Midwest. And um, John Kirsten, he won Realtor of the Year, by the way, and I know he was a competitor. He used to work for Paul. That's right, pa John Kirsten worked for Paul, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, it was, actually it was America's number one Century 21 firm for volume, oh, yeah. just totally. out of Detroit. Yeah. Anyways, um, he was good. John said, Jeff, you know, you just need a little season. <laughs> okay, you know, and of course, 19 years old, who was gonna tell me I need seasoning? So I start working, and I, and I was an honest guy, I said, well, John, if you don't mind, uh, I'm not making any decisions right now, but I'd like to see if I can get an opportunity at another company. And he said, sure, good luck, kid. You know, again, six, seven hundred agents that they had, so I was just a number at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to you guys, and we met at the Northville office, Yep. which, um, also, we're talking all these number ones. I mean, it was the number one office, it, just this one office alone, number one in Metro Detroit in the entire MLS. I mean, you guys had more top producers, more production, it was really cool. Anyways, we met at that office, yep. and what do you remember about that experience? Meeting you? Yeah. I'm like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so where's Joe, right? Joe's in the audience, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember meeting uh, this young guy, and one of the things that I liked the most, obviously, was his energy and enthusiasm, which I'm always a big fan of. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have any of that still today, you know, so I was a little concerned. No. And I remember that big smile, and I remember the eagerness and passion to want to move forward. And uh, it really resonated with me and obviously Paul that, you know, let's there's nothing more important than being around someone that's really hungry, wants to do something, that has a positive attitude, and we just had a good time with it. And to me, it wasn't even a question of you being seasoned, mm -hmm. yeah. whatever that means. Right, right. Like, yeah. So um, we met in the conference room. It was me, you, and, and a gentleman by the name of Ron Moore, who's no yep. longer with us today. Yep. And I remember you gave Ron the assignment, all right, 
Jeff, you're gonna go, you're gonna go learn from Ron, and yeah. Ron, hang out with Jeff, and you know, get the agents to warm up to him a little bit. And I think this was March of 2005, and we thought it was gonna take like six months for this process to start or to take place of me transitioning as the manager of your Livonia office. Uh -huh. And by May 1st, maybe it was my hunger or persistence or whatever, but by May 1st, Ron called you, at least this is what he told me, and said, hey, this kid's ready, let's go, let's give him a shot. I do remember that, yep. And so I was handed an office, I was kidding, it wasn't the most failing office, but it was a struggling <laughs> office. Um, maybe 18, 15 agents on the roster, totally. something like that. And um, do you remember some of the early months of me as a manager for you? What was that? What, what kind of calls did you field, and, and what kind of experiences did you deal with? Uh, so this is, this, I'm sorry, this is classic. So <laughs> I can't help myself. So I knew I was going to laugh out loud a lot. So there was a time, you know, first of all, he was doing a great job. And again, he jumped right in with both feet, which is what you want. And we always knew he was going to do well. So. I think the story goes is I was sitting at the main office mm -hmm. and I get a call or something mm -hmm. that one of the agents is in her office crying. Kathy, one of the agents is in her office crying. I'm like, really, why? What happened, like did their cat die or you know what went on? And they said, no, they're really upset because of. <laughs> and I'm like, you're kidding, okay, well, um, all right. I'll come down this afternoon and see what I can do or something to that. Is that yeah, how you, you remember did. Yeah, you yeah. Met with her. Grace was her first name, I believe. Oh, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that too, but you're right. It was Grace. Yeah. I forgot that on the phone when we okay, talked. Yeah. yeah. Just came exactly. back to me. So you, you And why why was this agent crying? What was I doing? <laughs> so one of the one of the conversations, I'll never forget it for the as long as I live. So obviously one of great uh, Jeff's greatest strengths is his eagerness is you know, get up and go, and we're just gonna go blow it right out, and I'm gonna call every expired, and I'm just gonna go knock them dead, and everyone else should go do it too. So, <laughs> he decides to take Grace into it, and I think maybe come off a little too strong, and she took it personally for whatever reason, and that just happens, right? Amiable personality. So I'll never forget, I showed up at the office, and I actually walked over to you, and I said, Jeff, and I went like this, I go, come take a walk with me. Mm -hmm. So we took a little walk. I don't know if we stepped outside and I said, you know, not everyone is, you know, one of your greatest strengths is your eagerness, but not everyone is as passionate about that or understands that. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it has, you know, what your job is as a leader is to learn to adapt to the person that you're leading. And so we had a little discussion that day about versatility. And you all know what versatility is. If you don't, it's the ability to adapt to a variety of different people in a variety of different situations. And as a leader and as a coach, our job is to adapt to, to that to person. That. Yeah. And so uh, we had a nice conversation about it. And I, I know you took it to heart. Oh, yeah. Because then what did you, didn't you go back and talk to Grace and like you kind of. Yeah, like, I softened. I, I kind of remember what I said to her. That what it, okay, t I don't remember <laughs> what it was. Tell them. You brought it up. <laughs> Grace, I don't know how you're going to expect to make it in this business if you're not willing to pick up the oh, phone and make yeah. calls. Yeah. And she had already been in the business for seven or eight years, by the way. Which is part of a challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so I offended that part, too, on top right. of that. Right? <laughs> well, I saw the roster. I saw her volume. She's been in it seven, eight years. Let's go. I got a solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I did. So one of the other conversations we had is that if you're going to confront someone, which is, by the way, the greatest form of caring, if you do it right, is you've got to, especially the amiable personality, you have to compliment them first. So that was something that we talked about. If you're going to be that straight, you know, you know, speak from the heart what you have. So I think I said in that first meeting, you mean I actually have to get to know these people? Oh, yeah. yeah. I said that. You remember you that? You did. Yeah. I totally... Well, where I was coming from with that is, I, I'll help them make money. Why do I have to know their dog's name? I can help them make money. <laughs> what does that have, their dog's name have to do with making money? I'm right. here to help them make money. Right. That was a hard lesson. Which is understandable. But you've done it well. Sure. You've so, accomplished it. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, you've gotten over that hurdle well. Thank you. 
Still working. It only on. took about no. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> um, For all of us, by the way. So, I'm, I'm thinking of our so so first couple months on the job. Obviously, I have to soften my approach. Mm. Uh, but then but then you start teaching me how to recruit, and we yeah. start doing call nights at at my office. And yeah. you actually started sending a lot of the managers to the Livonia office and say, Hey, go follow this kid. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Uh, yeah. So. Obviously, when you have someone like Jeff that is that uh, aggressive and eager and will do anything and is hungry to do it, if you can, you, I always thought you could teach an old dog new tricks. So I'm like, let me send some of the other managers that have been around a while mm -hmm. to go watch this young guy really uh, excel at, at that skill because yeah. that's what it is. And what did you get any feedback on that, by the way? Pushback? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got a lot of pushback from that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Like, well, what does he know? He's only 20, and I've been in the business for how long? You guys ever hear that? Well, I've been in the business for 40 years. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. So we did get pushback, but overall, it was a really good leadership team. Yeah. And and uh, and I and by the way, that that group of leaders yeah. uh, actually helped mold me to who I am today totally. because. You know, we would go to real estate conferences, and I, I wouldn't even be old enough to have a beer. And you know, right. they'd be hanging out with me at the lobby bar. It's and true. They're teaching me the way of life, right? Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that, that's another good story. Huh? <laughs> that's not in the notes. I know. <laughs> I won't do that to All you. Right. I, I promise. So. Well, Lloyd's here, I think. Oh yeah, Lloyd Lloyd Odell. Lloyd Odell. Yeah, hey, Lloyd. Lloyd, Lloyd yeah. and I. He was part of that. Yeah, yeah, Lloyd and I started on the first day. Yeah. Uh, with Cole Banker Schweitzer Real Estate as a manager. Yeah. And so, um, you know, t let's fast forward a little bit through the journey of, you know, obviously we're kind of rocking and rolling, and at some point in time the market crashes. Yeah. And you guys had to make some tough decisions, and I think a lot of it had to do with Paul was probably ready to retire anyways. Yeah. And so. Um, well, actually, b before we go get to that decision, there was this day that you called a meeting with all oh, of yeah. the managers, one by one by one, and can you talk to us a little bit about that day? Was that the day with the Livonia office? Well, all, all, all the, I mean, several yeah. of the offices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the consolidation, yeah. is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had to make some tough decisions, all of you. Um, let's see, I think I started in the business in 1988. Um, like I said, and so, you know, we've seen up and down cycles, and Paul has seen a lot more than most of us. And so there was a time where we made the business decision to have to consolidate uh, the office that Jeff was leading, and that was very tough because he was doing a good job, and um, I hated the discussion because I didn't want to have to have the discussion. But as when you lead people, you have to do it, and you do it in a, you know, positive, constructive way. But one thing, you were really uh, not happy with me, I think, at that time in Paul. Well, I think I was. Te I think I teared up. You did, because you know, I I knew that I spent the last couple of years yeah. pouring everything I had into building this office and building these agents yeah. and building these relationships, and I also understood it because at the time it was a common thing. Brokerages were consolidating, and you'd yeah. go from 16 offices to 12, but you'd still have the same number of agents. And my office was what I would call like a tweener office. It was in between two totally. powerhouse offices, Good right? You had the Northville it. office and you had the Plymouth office and Livonia was smack dab in the middle. Well, what's gonna be the first one to go? The one in the middle. So I got it, yeah. um, but of course at the time I was still you know, hurt by it. Yeah, which was that beautiful human side of him. And he did, he got teary eyed and because when you put so much into something, right? We've all felt that before. And then it's like, feels like it's taken away, but I'll never forget I looked at you in the right directly in your eyes when you were sad, and I said, "Listen, don't worry, man. You are going to be so successful mm -hmm. in anything you do." Yeah. And you know that's that's. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. knew it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I knew it at that. I knew at that time, and I just said, "You have so much to offer. This is just a stepping stone." And uh, it, 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 that's what happened. And so um, I was the last meeting of the day because there was some consolidations that oh, took yeah. place. Oh, yeah. And um, there was a gentleman who was also, I consider, one of my five, yep. uh, Tom Kotzian, who's no yep. longer with us today. Yeah. He happened to be that company's, Kohlbinger Schweizer's, trainer and recruiter yep. for all of their offices. And so, I'm sorry, he was the trainer. Yeah. Because you guys had a trainer and you had a recruiter. I think David. And so, yeah, David Lane, David was, Lane yeah. Was, was the recruiter. and, and um, 
I think the decision was, well, look, we got to find, again, I, I want to hear your side of it, but nope. I, my impression was we got to find something for this guy to do because <laughs> yeah. we're not letting him out of our world just yet. Yeah. And so um, you, you, remove, you eliminated those two positions and you, you created one. So mm -hmm. it was, there was a director of recruiting and there was a director of training and then you offered me the opportunity to become the director of training recruiting for the remaining 12 offices. That's right. And I'll never forget um, walking out, talk about a full, you know, everything's full circle, totally. right? Um, Tom Kotzian was, you know, he, he was the meeting right before me. And, you know, he shook my hand and looked me in the eye and said, Jeff, you're going to do just fine. We've prepared you for this. Yeah. And he had just been let go, um, but also was in on the decision of, of bringing me in, or at least had known that you guys were going to put me in that role. Exactly. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so that was also, uh, again, change, right? So you have to adapt to change. And I remember talking to Paul about it and having, a, you know, a heartfelt conversation with him because he cared very deeply for the people, which is always hard when you have to make changes. And I said, well, I have an idea. <laughs> Let's put Jeff in charge of all the training and recruiting, duh, right? Because one of the things that I knew about Jeff at that time is I knew he was a great salesperson, and I knew he would crush it as a salesperson, but also as a recruiter and a trainer, right? There was just something that we knew. So he ended up taking on that role, which um, we were very excited about. And yep did a heck of a job, man. Yeah, it was fun. Um, I got to travel to all the offices, yeah. meet with all the agents, meet with the same managers that, that probably didn't care for me. Now yeah. all of a sudden, you know, they have to listen to what I have to say to some degree. <laughs> um, and uh, we had a lot of fun. I mean, I got on the phones with them. I met with recruits with them. I mean, it was, yeah. a really, it was a really cool experience and a lesson for me. Yeah, that was a good time. And so after um, maybe 18 months or so in that role, um, I approached you and Paul and said that I would like to create a unique environment in the real estate industry that I don't think exists. Now, at mm -hmm. least it didn't exist in Detroit or in Michigan. Right. And I said, I, I picture an environment where um, there's no drama, there's no gossip, bells are ringing for appointments set, yeah. and, um, there's music playing, and people are high-fiving, celebrating each other's success. And, you know, I understood, you know, we were running a, a real estate brokerage. And so, right. Agents, yes, you had your way of doing business, but they were going any which way. Totally. And I wanted to operate an environment where there's accountability and there's structure and all of this. And so um, I think the conversation we had at the time was, Jeff, we'd love for you to do that because I had no intention of leaving you right. guys. Um, but the, the franchise that we belong to, uh, Coal Banker, didn't allow an agent to go have their own location right, within like the territory. Like a mega. Exactly. Yeah. Rules. And so, exactly. And of course, you know, every company's got their pluses and minuses, yep. and um, that was one of the more traditional rules. And so um, I went out exploring, and, you know, I, I let you know that that was a possibility. And, yeah. Um, then there was a meeting that took place in Sterling Heights. Yeah. And I'll never forget, Paul <laughs> looks at me and says, uh, 459 South Main Street, huh? <laughs> what? He's like, that's your new office, isn't it? <laughs> I said, how did you know? because I was meeting with them to tell them that I had to step away and go to another organization since I couldn't do this with them. And so, unbeknownst to me, the copier rep that we signed an agreement <laughs> with leaked information to the other <laughs> copier rep. Yeah, true story. And Paul is looking at me like, mm-hmm, I got your number, kid. You know? And so that was obviously a, a tough conversation for us to have. Sure. And how, what, what, how do you... How do you recollect that, or what experience or feeling did you guys have going through that? Obviously? So, of course, just like anybody else, um, when someone leaves that you have high regard for and who's been around, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so you go through that. It is business. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I was probably hurt mm -hmm. and upset for a little bit, but um, I've been very blessed to be taught that, to always take the high road and understand that, you know, people have to do what they have to do. So. Um, you did, and then, uh, you know, I'm just like, well, I'm going to keep in touch, and then yeah. you can tell the coaching story. Yeah, so yeah. then um, it wasn't too much, too long after that, maybe about a year, 18 months after that, um, um, you know, Paul had retired, and, and you were ready to move on to coaching. Yep. Uh, you were coaching for another organization, and you guys sold the company. Yep. And, um, and the company was doing well. I mean, yep. it, was, it, was a very, it was a thriving company. I mean, it was still, like, number one in the Midwest at the time. You sold the company and you moved to Las Vegas. Yes. Right. And so, 
um, as soon as I knew that you were coaching for this particular organization in Las Vegas, um, I reached out and said, hey, this is win-win. You're gonna get paid, and I'm gonna get to keep learning. Right. What do you think? And so, take I it from there. I said, absolutely. Yeah. Let's dive right in. So that was also a good time of our life. Yeah. Um, and you became my real estate sales and leadership coach. And yes. at the time, I think I was, this is this was because uh, I had a coach, James was my first coach. You were my second. Yeah, I remember that. So with James, it was mostly about personal production. And I was ready to go from salesperson to CEO, if you will, or right. salesperson to leader. Yep. And um, so I made the decision to move to you. I think it was probably 2009, I would want to say, somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, because I was still with James on that year. I did 100 deals. But, okay. I th you know, of course, what's next? What's next? Oh, I sold 100 homes. Okay, great. What's next? <laughs> so it was somewhere around there where I thought, okay, I want to start learning how to, how to get better at leading and get better at recruiting, even though I had done it for you previously. And so that's when we started working together as, with you as my coach. Right. What do you remember from those days? <laughs> uh, so one of the funniest things, and Jeff and I, he knows what I'm going to say, but there's a couple things that always make me laugh. So he was dead right, and when uh, Jeff Quinton was on stage, he was always about the hunt, right, with the expireds. I'm going to go after those expires. And by the way, he was excellent at it. The majority of your business came from him. You were phenomenal at it. You loved the hunt. And, I get on the phone, I try to coach him, and I'm like, so have you talked to your past clients in Center of Influence? Where's that whiteboard? <laughs> yeah. Where is that right over right. there? Mm -hmm. I'm like, so how many of your past clients in Center of Influence have you talked to this week? So anyway, the expired, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So he tried to sh change the subject all the time. So one of the things, as you said earlier, is, is agents that they either love the hunt and they go after expireds, and then they ignore their past clients in Center of Influence, and we, that was a constant conversation for how long? Be honest. Probably, I mean, I had the conversations with James, so probably right. like five years, yeah. first five years of my career. It was always every week, you know, who are you talking to, why are you talking to, what's the benefit of your PCCOI? And then he just does this most magnificent outline right in the <laughs> earlier <laughs> session about how to connect with your past clients and center of influence when I'm laughing. And Teresa, I don't know if Teresa is here, but. She, if she's not here, she's watching the live stream. Okay, so we got her, which was his assistant at the time, on the phone, I'm like, get Teresa on the phone. Mm -hmm. She's like, Kathy, what do you want? Okay, here's what we have to do. Every day you have to put, was it five? I think it was just five a day. Five a day. Yeah. Call your past clients, five. Jeff, what's five times five? 25. So the next week you get on the coaching call. How many of your past clients did you talk to this week? Tell me about the conversations. Did you get any referrals? And he's like, so I got five expired appointments. <laughs> I'm like, that wasn't the answer to the question. So it took many years, and maybe you can speak to that. Yeah. I mean, you do all the time to get you back. Well, yeah, and not a lot of people in this, uh, uh, several people in the audience know this, but the 60 or percent or so that haven't raised their hand, um, it, it finally hit me when our business, so I shifted from expires for sale by owners to advertising. So oh, I still right. le was not willing to go to right. the database. Right, right. I went to advertising. So yeah. I bought leads, I put up billboards, I uh -huh. did all those things. And I think it was probably 2015 and 2016, you know, our, our, our team was selling a ton of homes, but those two years in a row, I lost a half a million dollars each year. So I, lost my, I had built up a million dollars in my savings account. All of it was gone. I mean, literally, I had like 20 grand left in my savings account. And we had a pretty sizable team. I mean, a million bucks in two years, gone. Because I was so resistant to the database. And so um, finally, at that point in time, I didn't have a choice. Yeah. So I said, OK, we're not going to spend at that, that last year where I lost the second half a million, we were spending $1.8 in advertising that year. <laughs> So I remember the conversation. Well, somehow I was, was this when I was in Boston? I was living in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I fly back into Detroit to visit family. And I get on I-94, and I think Paul says, is that Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big, huge billboard with this big, handsome mug on it. So I immediately pick up the phone. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, is Jeff there? Hey, Jeff, it's Kathy. I'm like, is that your picture on the billboard? <laughs> and the two things I said to you is, how much did it cost you? Uh -huh. Because as a coach, we have to look out for your profit, yep. right? And then the next thing I said you can figure out, I said, and are you calling your past clients in center of influence? <laughs> this is just ridiculous. <laughs> yep. 
And then he kind of admitted that maybe he was just starting to do that. So I'll never forget that. That yeah. made me laugh. So that, that was the rude awakening. Two years in a row, oh, I lost know. all my savings. And finally, finally, all right, there's got to be something to this database thing. Yeah. And so we took the, the budget. Call from, me crazy. From, uh, we went from $1.8 million that year in advertising spend to maybe eight or 900000 just so and my thought process was, I need to earn a million bucks back pretty quickly here. Yeah. Uh, now, we, of the eight or 900,000 that we, we spent, maybe 200,000 of that was carved out for database value. So events, mailings, you know, no calls yet. I hadn't started the <laughs> calls yet. <laughs> I don't want to talk to them, okay? So that's how that went. All right, so uh, fast forward to um, you made the decision at some point in time, because you were, you were coaching at the time. So for this organization, you were coaching um, all, and, and you know, we could say the Mike Ferry organization, who, by the way, I owe a lot of credit to my success uh, to Mike. And for those that have been following me for a while, you know I mention his name pretty much every event we have at least once, and he deserves that. Yep. Um, so you, you were coaching for Mike exclusively. And Paul was on the golf course every day, and you were bringing in the, <laughs> bringing in the bacon. Um, and I mean, you probably got up to like 50, 60 clients a week, or I mean, what was your client load like? Yeah, 60 clients a week. 60 clients a week, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. And so at what point in time did you decide to, tell me how the Boston thing took place, because I'm sure you didn't love Vegas coming from Michigan, so talk to me about that. Oh, why I went to, oh, yeah. uh, so I moved to Las Vegas, I think, I, lost my head for a second. No offense against anyone out there. But I was used to green grass and water, mm -hmm. right? You guys know what I mean? Mountains were beautiful and all that. But we, we went there and uh, worked full time uh, there. And I, lo I loved working there. It just, I, I wasn't happy with, with living in the desert. And that's really exactly what happened. Yep. And then a friend of mine. Um, Who you were coaching, I think. Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, a friend of mine that, uh, uh, owns and operates a large independent in the North Shore of Boston. Um, we were introduced to him actually around a fire pit in Mexico. That's another funny story for another day. And um, he ended up becoming a client of mine. Uh -huh. And so he needed some help operating his business. In Pretty sizable business too. How many agents did they have? Yeah, the well we started, we had about 70, then we grew it to about 250. Um, average sale price is like 950,000. So it's, it was an uh, independent, wonderful company. It's still there. It's still doing great. And uh, you know, when I was taught to lead through my husband, Paul, primarily, um, I felt like I wanted to do that. Yeah, and so, you, so you, you, you either were, were, you were, re you were ready to go make an impact I was. in another and, and get out of the desert. Right. And so Boston afforded you the opportunity to get water back, to get right. green grass back. Totally, it's a beautiful and place. And do what you love. Yeah. And so you did that for how long? Uh, about 10 years. 10 years you were at this organization. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you were responsible for what? So I did all the recruiting, um, mm -hmm. retention, uh, training, and I spent a, a lot of time operating. Yep. So recruit, uh, retain, training, coaching. I did a hiring. lot of coaching. Yep. did a lot of hiring. Uh, but I was in the field recruiting. I was yep. on the phone every day. Yep. And we grew it pretty substantially. It was super fun. Yeah, yeah. Real successful company still to this day. Yeah, it is. And so at some point in time, you decided that you're ready to come home. Tell us about that. So yeah, COVID, you know, COVID came and affected all of us in many different ways. And uh, fortunately, we were, you know, healthy through it all. But frankly, uh, I just got to the point where, and this might sound corny to you, but I was walking on the beach one day and, and I was thinking about life and reflecting. And all of a sudden I came home and Paul's sitting down in the office and I walked in and I said, okay, honey, it's time to go home. He goes, what? I said, it's time to go home. He goes, we are home, right? We're sitting in, his, in, our, in our office. Yeah. No, I said, home, like Michigan. He goes, huh? So we had the conversation, and he was great about it, and all our families in the state of Michigan. And, and uh, I think through COVID, you just had that sense of um, like reflection and growth, and, yeah. and it was just time yep. to go back. And so um, you made the decision to leave that role, which was a pretty high-paying role. It was. Uh, because around that time was the first time I tried to get you to, to join us. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe the second time. Okay. But, you know, I mean, that was like formal, yeah. 
And, and I remember, I think, one of our conversations, you said, Jeff, if it doesn't have a four or a three or something in front of it, <laughs> follow up with me later. No, it was kind of, <laughs> kind of went that way, yeah. Yep. And I loved it there, too, so, yeah. yeah. Good. So uh, you moved back home when? Uh, about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. And you moved to Northern uh, Michigan? Li Northern Michigan, yep. yep. A little hey. town called Petoskey. Petoskey, Michigan, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yep. A lot of our attendees. RTC. A lot of our attendees are familiar because they go to Traverse City now. Right. And Which is gorgeous. You, can you imagine, thousand people flying into that little airport in I Traverse know. City? It's I love it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So, um, 18 months. Obviously, you, you well, you left that you left that role after 10 years. So, what what did you what have you been doing the last 18 months? I've been coaching full time. Mm -hmm. And so you went, you, you said, hey, Mike, would you take me back? Or, I mean, you guys were still probably seeing each other because oh, yeah. this company that you worked with was going to events. Yes, and all exactly. That. Yeah, so um, I owe a lot of uh, who I am today to Mike. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, and he was always gracious and amazing. Good. Yeah. So um, in the last 18 months, you've been coaching primarily the brokers, the owners, the team leaders, his, his top producers. I mean, from what I understand, just from people that have told me by going to those events and, and meeting coaches and so forth, you, you, you were it when it came to coaching the best of the best in that system. Well, I was one of them, yeah. yeah. One of the coaches that I was fortunate enough to coach. I coached every level, but primarily the leaders and the team leaders and a lot of top producers, and it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. And uh, we saw a lot of growth and a lot of people do very well. And I always say what Mike always said is I have the easy part, they have the hard part sure. going out. But it was, it's fun to watch the growth of people. That's what it's all about. And you got up to, again, probably a 50 or 60 client load. I did. You were obviously requested often, I would imagine. And uh, you had a full schedule. I mean, you, you had a waiting list, right? Yeah. And so um, I, I, I have to share something that I, I don't know whether I've told you this or not. Um, it was, I was sitting in a mastermind. Uh, obviously, you know Gary Keller is one of my five as well. Yeah. And um, um, he asked us to write down the name of someone that we think would make a massive impact in our organization, but you have no chance of getting. <laughs> Great question, by the way, right? Think Great about it. Great question. Someone you know that would make a massive impact in your life, in your business, uh, you probably have no chance of getting them. I wrote your name down. You did? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I never, sorry. I never heard that story. I'm humbled. Yeah. yeah. And so that was probably five or six years ago, I would say. And obviously, we've kept in touch. And um, I think we have something to share. Go ahead. You do it. So. I would like to have you join me in welcoming the newest director of sales for Live Unreal Companies, which means the leader of our leaders, the leader of our brokerages, the leader of our, our, our sales leaders, the leader of Glover U. Um, our, our, and you, so you'll be working closely with Kate, obviously. Yeah, for anyone's like, oh, where's Kate going? Yeah. Um, and, and also, the people in this audience will have an opportunity to take advantage of time with you just like I have because you'll also be coaching for Glover U. Mm -hmm. So please join me in welcoming <laughs> Kathy Kessler. Thanks, man. Welcome. Hey, good night. I think that is the very definition of life is full circle. Yeah, it is. Right? For sure. So thank you for, for being open to that and finally <laughs> accepting the thank opportunity. Thank you for your persistence. Oh, yeah. um, it feels really good. Good. So um, when I say this group is going to have an opportunity to work with you, there's two ways because we know that there's a group of people in the room that you know, they're at the point where they're like, I would love to have the opportunity to work with the person that coached Jeff, but I'm not in the spot to do so. So we made the decision, and we're announcing it today also, that Kathy will be leading the team building salesperson to CEO course, and the first time, 
the next time it launches, which I think is mid-February, we're gonna be co-teaching that together. Yeah, that'll be fun. So that'll be really cool. Yeah, and that's no extra charge or anything for that, just yeah. whatever the group programs are. So that is the easiest way to take advantage of something that I was so grateful, or take advantage of something that I had the opportunity to do so. But you'll also be coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And so there's people in this audience that have coached with other organizations, or maybe a handful of our coaches that have gotten to a certain point and they're ready to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. And there's people in the audience that, that know that in order to raise their lid, they need to be thinking about the next person that's gonna help them do that. And you're gonna have an opportunity to coach directly with her one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Jeff. So, okay, thank you. So you'll be working with our leadership teams so you'll be in the trenches, yep. which I love. Me I mean, too. that's like my, the sound, but the number one sound bite totally. they put in every single pre promo video we do, because I believe that. I agree. You should be working with someone in I the trenches. Totally agree. And that was part of the, the expectation to make this happen. Totally. Um, and, and you very much respected and understood that side of it, because yep. you could easily say, Jeff, I don't need to be in the trenches. Are you kidding me, kid? I taught you. You could say that. Um, and obviously you've coached people that are even doing better and, and greater things than even I am. So you didn't have to do that. Uh, but you made the decision because you wanted to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with our leaders totally. and um, be very in tune to recruiting, training, developing, coaching, brokerage, finances, all that other stuff as it relates to growing. So I'm so excited to have you on board. Yeah, me too. And I love the trenches, just for the record. Awesome. <laughs> so. Good. Well, welcome Kathy Schweitzer. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Good stuff. This way? Yeah.